Hello, family. It's Frank from Word of Wisdom Ministry, and I'm here on the set of Wild Moment, getting ready to bring you into yet another episode. This episode today is meant to encourage you. I'm sharing two powerful testimonies from my life, and I just want to let you know, I want to reassure you today that you are next in line for your miracle. Don't give up, my brother. Don't throw in the towel, my sister. You are next in line for your miracle. Hi, I'm Karima with Word of Wisdom Ministry. Thank you for joining us today. Please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and like us on Facebook. And now for another inspiring episode of Wow Moment with our host, Frank Costin. Tonight, I just want to share the goodness of the Lord with you tonight. I don't particularly have a, a lesson. It's going to wind up being a lesson. That's just how it goes. But I just want to share the goodness of the Lord with you tonight. I want to talk to you about how good God has been to me. And hopefully and prayerfully that you uh, that are found today in the middle of a storm, in the middle of a valley, that you can find comfort in knowing that if God can do it for me, and I'm nobody, I, I'm no respect of person, I'm no no person that God has a special respect for. God, the Bible says that God has no respect of person. So I, I'm nobody in this game. I, I'm just your brother in Christ. I'm just I'm just a fellow, a laborer on the field. But God has been so so good to me. He's always ordered and guided by steps, even when I didn't know uh, what that even meant. Even when I didn't know who God was for myself, he still had this day planned out for me. He had my life mapped out to this day, all the way up to this day today and beyond. God has things planned for you, and He's got he's been guiding your steps. Sure, there's been a lot of missteps. Sure, there's been a lot of mistakes. Sure, there's a lot of things that you wish that you could take back or you wish never happened, but listen— God is ordering your steps. Rest assured in that today, my brother. Rest assured in that today, my sister. God is ordering your steps. He's ordering mine. He's been keeping me, and he's been keeping you. Even, even, listen to me clearly. Listen to me clearly. Even, even if you have been going through the worst situations of life, and and people always say there's why are people abused and why why are these things happening and why are these things listen those things are testimony the fact that you're still standing today means that what God has placed inside of you is, is he's he's sure in his and what he placed inside of you, he's so sure that he knows that you can handle it but there's somebody is going to cross your path that probably hasn't faced half of what you're going through or what you've been through, and they're going to be ready to toss in the towel, but it's going to be your testimony about what God did for you that is going to change their circumstance. It's going to change their situation. It's going to change their mindset. That's where it begins, in the mind. And when your testimony enters the ears and pricks the heart, it's going to do something in the mind, and it's going to help them understand that God is working it out for them as well. He's here as their hero. He's here as their father. He's here as their guide. He's here to lead them through all dangers, seen and unseen. And that, that leads me to uh, what I want to talk to you tonight about, dangers seen and unseen in, in my own life. And I pray that uh, that you can connect with these testimonies that I'm going to share with you tonight. Uh, let's get into some Bible reading in Psalms, the 91st chapter of Psalms. Um, and uh, it's the first through the 16th verse. And uh, this is talking about uh, God being my refuge and my fortress. Uh, verse number one says, He that dwelleth in the secret place, of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge, my fortress, 
my God, and him will I trust. Surely, verse number three says, he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Verse number five, thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. Number seven, a thousand shall fall at thy side and 10,000 at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Didn't even come near you. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. Thou shall bear thee up in their hands, lest Thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder. The young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him with long life. Will I satisfy him and show him my salvation? So I just want to share some things. Uh, listen, it's been on my heart. It's just been on my mind. It's, uh, some things that have taken place in, in my my own life that I haven't thought about in, in in a long time, and so I was just sitting around this week and I just been thinking, and I was thinking about uh, my childhood and I was thinking about a time uh, when I was at the age of about five years old maybe, and I I, I remember it uh, like it was yesterday um, because it's such a significant uh, event in my life. Uh, as a child, I thought nothing of it. As as I became an adult and and as I began this walk with Christ, uh, it it just began to uh, resonate in me just how powerful and merciful the hand of God is in, in my life. So I was at the uh, about the tender age of five, um, and uh, I remember just being out playing, just you know what kids do and. Uh, we had, uh, uh, alongside the driveway, uh, we had a row of bushes that separated our yard from uh, the neighbor's yard. And the bushes at the bottom, uh, they were, it was cut out, and uh, you can go up underneath two bushes. It was like a big cutout. And uh, I just remember uh, I went up under the bush, and um, I remember saying to myself, that is a funny-looking branch. Uh, some of you probably already know where, where this story is going. Uh, so I'm in the neighbor's yard, and I had to come back to my yard. So I go right back through the same bush, and the branch is a little further down. And I'm like, man, that sure is a funny-looking branch. So I, I, one more time, I, I, I had to go back through again, and I'm, I'm seeing this funny-looking branch that's just hanging down inside of this bush. And, and so I come back through the last time, and... And when I come back through the last time, my, my older cousins and uh, my, my, my younger brother, they were, they were in the yard, and my father's just inside the house. And uh, 
a snake just comes flying out of the tree. Uh, this thing that I thought was a bush the whole time, it, it was a snake. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, we live in North Carolina, those uh, copperheads. Uh, this is the, the kind of snake that, if I'm, my memory serves me correctly, I believe it was a copperhead. Um, but I know it, it, it wasn't a, a friendly snake. And, and I know that uh, when, when, he, when he came out of the bush, he came out of the bush meaning business. And he didn't at any time while I was going. I mean, when I tell you, he was, he was only mere inches away from my head. Every time I went underneath the tree, he's mere inches. I mean, he's, he's well within striking range. But he never struck while I was going through. Now, I went through, there's four passes going through uh, right, right there, right up underneath of him. There's four passes. That I did, and on the fourth one, he decided to come out from the bush. Uh, of course, my my father, uh, after all the screaming that the kids did, uh, my father came out and he he took care of the snake for us. But uh, just wanted to just tell you that, listen, danger seen and unseen, even when you don't know, the danger is there. God knows. And God is there. There are some things that have been set up to take you out. And you didn't even know that those things were present. But can I tell you today that God knew that those things were present. He knew that those dangers were there. He knew that those traps were there. He knew that that poison was there. Whatever it was that you came in contact with. It could have been spiritual. It could have been uh, physical. It doesn't matter what kind of danger. You may not have known that the danger existed, but your God in heaven did. And it's really, really beautiful when you didn't know that danger was there until God showed up. And then after God showed up and, 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 and moved you from danger, then you can look back and see what was headed your way? What, what was supposed to happen to you? But God, you know how we say, but God. And I tell you that snake was there. I can't stand snakes. I can't stand them. I can't stand them. But God. And, it, it, and it's like uh, I, I keep seeing, um, I, I, I see this uh, as seen on TV, and uh, there was a gentleman that was, he was coming home to his house, and and uh, all he did was walk to the front door of his house, and he was going to open the door, and there was a snake that was up in, in the, uh, the porch light, and he was tangled, wrapped around the porch light. And for some reason, because he was approaching his own front door, the snake being around the porch light felt threatened, and he struck the man just above the eyebrow. Uh, and it's, it's, it's just when I see that, and, and, and then I think about me going up underneath this tree several times, how the Lord kept that serpent from striking me. And it was danger. Even though I seen it and thought it was a branch, it was danger unseen. But God was still on the scene. Now there's... Several, several, several times in my life where God has kept me from something, but I, I just I just have time tonight to uh, share a couple with you. And, and another that I want to share with you, uh, listen, this one right here, it takes people of faith to understand this. Uh, there are going to be people that, that have probably watched the broadcast on television or on social media, wherever you find it at. There might be people that say that, this man is, is, is making stuff up or, or that this thing didn't happen. But listen, just as sure as I'm sitting here and, and, and if my, my wife was in here to tell you uh, she was the witness, we were together when it happened. And I'm going to go ahead and share this testimony. And for those of you that, that, that know the power of God, you'll know where I'm coming from. Because there's no, I'm, listen, I will not sit here and lie on my God. I have to tell you what God has done for me. My testimony, the Bible says that we're overcomer 
by the word of our testimony, by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. So my testimony is going to help you overcome today. Uh, buckle up your seatbelts because I got to tell you something. In 1999, uh, my wife and I, we were living in a place called Babenhausen, Germany. And we've been in Babenhausen for two years straight without coming home uh, to the United States. And we're big family-oriented people. So if we've missed two big family Christmases. We've missed big Thanksgivings. We've missed all this stuff. New Year's, we're missing birthdays. We're missing all these things. So we're eager to come home. So in 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 the uh, in Germany uh, in the military, I was in the United States Army at the time. Uh, when we got ready to come home on leave, uh, they would sign you out on leave and and sign your leave form, but it actually doesn't take effect until midnight. So I probably got my leave form. I probably got uh, picked it up around five p.m. or so, but it's it's just a piece of paper in my hands until midnight. At midnight then I'm officially on leave. Uh, so uh, instead of faxing it in, my wife and I decided we're going to take a drive, and we're going to drive to Frankfurt, and, and, and instead of faxing it to the airfield or, or to, the, uh, uh, to the terminal in, in uh, Frankfurt, Germany, to the air base, instead of faxing it there so we can catch a flight with our, uh, um, to get back home, we decided we're going to drive it to Frankfurt. So in doing so, uh, we're... Uh, in the left lane, and we're doing, I'm doing about 120, 110, 120 miles, miles per hour. I'm in the far left lane. Uh, there's no one else on the road, and there is no left shoulder. There's construction going on. So uh, all the way down in the left lane is, a, is, is what we call a jersey barrier. So you can't get over to the left. I, I might be able to get half of a, or, or a portion of, of a tire, the width of a tire, off, off the road. Maybe, maybe, uh, but I have to knock a mirror off to do so. So there's nowhere to go on the left-hand side. And, uh, you know, uh, if you picture uh, interstate, for those of you who've never been to Germany, uh, uh, Autobahn is uh, basically just uh, interstate. And so uh, we're here on this uh, Autobahn, and we're driving at a rapid rate of speed because we're in Germany, and that's what we do. And uh, I'm driving a Volkswagen Jetta, and uh, here's a car coming and, and is entering onto the autobahn ahead of me. And you know how the on ramps go. So I'm I'm headed this way, and and there's an on ramp ahead of me, so the car should should curve and then straighten out and be going in the same direction that I'm going. But what happened on this particular occasion? Uh, while I'm driving this way, the car up ahead of me. Instead of going straight and, and going in this direction, he came across all four lanes of the Autobahn. And he came across all the way across until he hit the Jersey barrier uh, in the far left lane, which I'm riding in. Now, this is where God stepped in. And we were at a point in our life, we, we knew who God was. We were raised in the church, and we knew who God was, but we needed to know for ourselves. So at this moment, I can see this man. He's white as a sheet, and he's sitting in his car with his arms crossed over his face because my headlights are right in his face. That's how close I am. But God spoke a word to me, and, you know, God doesn't operate in time. And I'm telling you, God did all this stuff in a split second. God spoke a word to me, and he told me, don't hit the brakes. He told me, don't turn the wheel. Don't try to get out of it. He told me, you're going to hit this car but everything is going to be okay. Then he showed me a vision, and it was a horrific wreck. You couldn't even tell what kind of cars were involved in the wreck. You couldn't, my car was so mangled, you couldn't identify it. But yet my wife and I were standing outside of the car without a scratch on us. So he gave me that piece. So now it's time for impact. So I brace for the impact, and I, and I close my eyes and brace for the impact. Ooh, hallelujah. And after I brace for the impact, I open my eyes because the impact never happened. But then I looked in the rearview mirror and his car is still blocking the left lane. And I'm still driving in the left lane. Now listen to me. 
Hear me today. I don't know what God did. Everybody that hears the testimony, they say, oh, did God pick y'all up? Or did God uh, uh, take you through the car? Did he translate you? Listen, it is not my place to know what God did. The only thing that you need to know, the only thing that I need to know is that he did. God did it. And God showed me that day. Listen, you can't tell me. Nobody can tell me that my God isn't real. Nobody can tell me that my God's not a keeper. Nobody can tell me that my God's not a deliverer. Nobody can tell me that my God doesn't perform miracles. Nobody can tell me that my God doesn't save. That day solidified it for me when the hand of God swept down and did whatever he did to make sure that we were kept safe from all hurt, harm, and danger. And that was danger seen. But what was unseen was how God's hand moved. We couldn't see what he did, but we just know that he did it. And we praise him even to this day. And listen, I used to let that testimony get old because it was back in 1999. But I had a pastor in Richmond, Virginia, by the name of Joe Forbush. And he used to always tell the church, don't let your testimony get old. Don't let the enemy make your testimony old. Meaning, I don't care if it happened back in the 1800s. If God did it for you, tell the testimony. It happened for us in 1999. God did it for us, and we got to tell the testimony. I have to tell you what God did for me. So I'm telling you today, no matter how impossible your situation may be. You may need a miracle today. You might be uh, have a family member that's on a ventilator right now with this awful virus that's going on, and you need a miracle today. The same God that kept us on that autobahn, he's still keeping people today. You might need a miracle in your life, your personal life. You might need a healing. You might be facing some obstacles or some situations or some circumstances that you don't have a way out for. God is healing. God is keeping. God is delivering. And God is saving. God is still performing miracles. Miracles, signs, and wonders. They should follow those that believe. When we believe God, we should always be in the presence of miracles, signs, and wonders. We don't have to go seeking signs. Signs should follow after us because we are believers. And if you believe today, your situation will be taken care of. If you believe today, God's got you. God's got, I come to encourage you today. God got you. He's got you in his hands. He hasn't forgot you. He hasn't forgotten you. He hasn't forsaken you. He's got you right now in the palm of his hand. I don't care how bad it looks. Keep the faith, and you're coming out of that thing. I got to go. My time is up. But I want to encourage you tonight. Whatever you're going through, change your mindset right now and say, God, I'm next in line for my miracle. My miracle is on the way. My miracle is on the way. My Uncle Norman Hutchins says, get ready. Get ready for your miracle. Repent today. If you haven't done so, repent and be baptized. Every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. This is the salvation plan. Jesus said, verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of spirit, you cannot enter into the kingdom of God. So therefore today, I'm urging you, my brother, I am urging you, my sister, if you have not been baptized, reach out to us and we will guide you to a place that will baptize you today in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. If you have not been filled with the Holy Ghost, with the evidence of speaking in other tongues, call us, email us, send us a letter, get in touch with us today and we will lead you to a place where they will pray you through to the Holy Ghost. And whatever you need prayer for, whatever miracle you stand in need of, I'm telling you today that God is sitting on the throne and he still hears. Send us that message and we will join with you in prayer and watch God move. Listen, 
I love you. God loves you. And until next week, be blessed in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you for tuning in to tonight's episode of Wow Moment with Frank Costin. We hope that you were blessed by this message. Please remember to subscribe and click the notification bell on YouTube. Like us on Facebook and listen to us on podcasts at Spotify, Google Podcasts, Anchor, Overcast, Pocket Cast, Breaker, and Radio Plus. We want to interact with you, so please leave us a comment, prayer request, and a praise report. If you are looking for a church home, we will help you with that as well. We would love to have you as part of this ministry. There are three ways to become a partner. One, subscribe to our channel. Two, share our link with at least three family members and three friends. Three, you can also partner by making a donation via cash app at dollar sign Frank Costin. We look forward to joining you again with another encouraging message. Until then, God loves you and so do we.